<laughs> what a beautiful spot to enjoy lunch. Like, are you kidding me? Somebody pinch me because I feel like I've been dreaming this entire day. It's so much fun. I literally just went swimming in a hot springs that's uh, heated by the volcano beside it and now I hiked up this little mountain to enjoy my lunch here. Amazing. You know, there's been some bad days of solo traveling, but this is not one of them. Like, I refuse to live my life in fear, regret, or just dreams because that's what I did for so long. And now I just, I'm so grateful that I forced myself onto that plane and way out of my comfort zone to go travel the world by myself because look at the stuff that you get to see. Like, amazing. for tuning in this is sarah hall with the wealthy optimist i am in santorini and today i am going on a boat tour in a classic greek style boat we're going um leaving from parisa and uh taking the boat all the way from here to i can't remember the name of it right now but it is a volcano that's active on another small island and then a hot springs that's right beside it and then we're going to another island just north of there um, and we're going to spend a little bit of time there and then we're going to uh, park in front of ia which is spelled o-i-a it's a really beautiful popular part of the island um like the fancy kind of part of the island uh so and it's like the classic santorini that you see in the postcards and all those pictures when you type in santorini this that's the area um and then we're going to uh, uh, come back on the boat. So I'm super excited. It's like an eight hour day thing and I'm going to share that with you today. Um, I'm just enjoying my coffee and a nice snack before I get ready to go and yeah, I'm really excited. It's a beautiful day. I'm a bit sunburnt because I spent the last two days just relaxing and decompressing and meditating on the beach, reading. Um, I found a really good book uh, in the library here and um, I've been reading that and it's actually really funny. It's kind of ironic because the book is about a man who tells his wife after his father dies that he needs to go on a like solo travel for six months or so and I'm like is this the male version of me I'm like this is literally what I did I literally told my boyfriend after my sister died I need to go and travel the world except I'm going for a few years and my boyfriend was like okay but the difference in the book is he is going and there he's like open to sleeping with people he's like wants to have it like they're not even married like a break break like they're never gonna recover from that. Me and my boyfriend, it's not like that. It's, we're still together, we're doing a long distance thing, which I'm not gonna lie, it's not easy, it's hard. Um, and I've only been gone for you know a short period of time, not for like a year, because then it would be even harder. But just, I thought it was so ironic. Like what a coincidence that that's the book, and it's so funny, it's by Marianne Keyes, so it's called The Break. You guys should read it, it's really funny. It's like super light, it's perfect beach read. There's a tomato museum in case you're interested. Oh, 
Mia Kajima and it's um, got a volcano on it so that's cool and then there's like a hot springs but the hot springs isn't like the hot springs how they are in Canada it's like a hot springs that's um, a hot that's only hot it makes the water hot because of the sulfur, the sulfur that comes up from the volcano so there's different little um, active volcano points so the heat that comes through actually heats the cove so it's more like a beach cove that has hot water because of the volcano which is cool um, if you're into like uh, you know geography kind of stuff so that's interesting but I'm excited to like see it and swim in it um, apparently like you're not supposed to wear white because the sulfur dyes your clothes orange and the water is actually the color orange so these are things that I've been told so I'm excited to see it though it's gonna be fun So all of the rocks around here are all lava rocks. Um, the most recent explosion was in that um, and it has been dormant ever since then, which is really, really fascinating. And they're actually always monitoring it. This is a national uh, park, and it has been declared a national geography site of extreme unearthly beauty. It's really fascinating to see something like this in real life. I've only ever seen stuff like this on like Nat Geo. <laughs> so it's really cool to actually be here and to be able to some activity from the volcano so the hot springs actually are created by bursts of from the that's below. so bursts of heat create a water temperature to rise and creates a hot springs in the area where we're going to go after this but it's really good to be able to explore around here. So right underneath this area there are actually huge stores of magma that are just waiting and waiting and waiting until the next explosion that will happen, next eruption. And it hasn't happened in 68 years, so who knows when it will happen again, but it's really, really interesting to actually be able to come and explore this kind of stuff. There's probably like, I don't know, like a thousand visitors just right now at this point. And then go swimming 
active uh, hot springs that are activated by the volcano. about volcanoes right now. Um, all these little domes around here, that you see like there, there, um, those are from the last uh, volcano eruption, which happened 60 years ago in But I learned that near Aquatia, so the part where the red beach is, that's where the very first volcano eruption, like about roughly between 650,000 to 1.5 million years ago, first erupted and created that island there. So that Santorini is like surrounded by 12 by volcanic eruptions. How freaking cool is that? Like, so fascinating. So it was all created like roughly around like 1.5 million years ago. Also, scientists can't predict um, the, when the earthquake uh, eruptions are going to happen. And there's like roughly a thousand earthquakes that happen, like tremors, not like major earthquakes, but like tremors that happen that most of the time you can't even feel on the islands. Um, but what the people, like the people that live in Santorini, there's roughly 15,000 people live on the actual island of Santorini, like inhabitants, um, but millions of tourists come and go every year. So the people that actually live here are more scared of an actual earthquake coming and destroying their towns than of a volcanic eruption because scientists can predict the exact day and place that a volcanic eruption is going to happen, like within either a month before or a year before. How is that? It's fascinating. Okay, so this spot she said is like really, really hot. Oh my god, it's so hot. You can see the steam. Can you see that? There's actual steam coming up off of it, and it's uh, it's excruciatingly hot to the touch. So that's all because of the volcanic. Oh my god. That steam pressure of the air up because there's a magnum, uh, magnum cave. I forget what it was called. Down below, underneath that spot. So crazy. Cool. It's so hot. Okay, the view behind me is so beautiful, but seriously, pictures do not do it justice at all. I tried taking a picture and it's just not the same. Like, you have to see it in real life. like the hot springs areas so there's a bunch of them around you can see like a little channel there you see how the water changes color we're gonna go swimming in there so what she was saying is that we actually can't get any closer than like maybe a hundred meters to the shore so we actually have to jump off the boat and swim out to there so this is the last you're gonna see me because I'm jumping off the boat and oh the temperatures are roughly around like 75 degrees Fahrenheit in this area and then it gets to 110 degrees Fahrenheit when you get closer and it's all fueled by the um, steam and the heat that comes and radiates off of the island because of the magma that's underneath deep in the core so cool. That was so much fun. So you go down this little channel and you go like all the way, maybe like 100 meters um, swimming and the water gets hotter and hotter the more that you go. But when you get out, your body's like covered in sulfur because the sulfur is what changes the color, right? So um, 
people were told not to wear white and stuff. I unfortunately saw lots of people wearing white already, <laughs> but it stains everything. So um, a friend of mine actually went yesterday and she came back and her like shirt was white and it was just like completely stained orange. Um, you can even see like, I don't know if you can see that, but like underneath my nails are orange right now. It was a really, really nice swim. It looks like I'm tanned right now because of the sofa. <laughs> I tried not to get my hair wet because it's blonde. It probably would have got dyed a bit from it, but that was super fun. And uh, down there too, like with the sulfuric mud, you can actually like write on the rocks and somebody wrote, uh, sorry about Trump. <laughs> This was super fun, but now I'm starving. So now we're going to another island um, to go and eat and have a few hours to kind of like explore and relax. And then we're going uh, to see Ia. Yeah. 